Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm glad that you're here. Today I want to do something a little different for the channel. Instead of talking about how we can use modern technology to learn and teach better, I'm going to go back in time. I have an old 20 year old first generation iPod. Normally it sits right up here on the shelf and I just use it for decoration. But today I thought, you know what? Let's take it off the shelf. Let's see if we can get this working. And let's see what sort of music I was listening to 20 some years ago. Now I do think I did bring this back to life maybe about 10, 12 years ago, but I'm wondering if I can bring it back to life now. It's just gone past its 20th anniversary. The original iPod came out in uh, January of 2001, so this is over 20 years old. I'm gonna see if I can bring it back to life. Let's go have a look. Okay, so this is pretty cool. This brings back a lot of memories. I really liked this iPod when it came out. This is the uh, 5 gig model, so it came out uh, first generation and on the back here, and I'll see if I can find a better picture of this, but it'll say that it's the um, 2001 edition there. It's kind of a fun thing to do. Now the old iPod came with a wheel and that's how you navigated around. The center button was sort of an enter or a select button, menu, fast back, fast forward, rewind, pause and play. But the iPod came out, when it first came out, you couldn't get it for Windows. It was a Mac only thing. So if you look here, there's actually a Firewire port. There's the audio jack, and then there's this button here, this slider, that allows me to put it on hold or to take it off from hold. And that just enables or disables the wheel so that I don't accidentally, you know, stop playing music while it's in my pocket, which of course is where it would be. So if we have a look at this, let's see if we can bring it back to life. But of course, now I need that Firewire cable. Fortunately for me, I have a big Tupperware container full of old technology, and I had one of the cables here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and we're gonna plug it on in. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that cable in, and we're going to then take the other end, and we're going to plug it into the wall. Unfortunately, it is also Firewire. And I don't have a Firewire computer, but I was fortunate enough I found this found an old Apple power brick that has the Firewire connector. Now I did replace the battery in this iPod about seven or eight years ago, I think. Could have been as long as 10 years ago. So, and the batteries, the original batteries were kind of notorious for not being that great. In fact, I think there's a fairly famous YouTuber that made quite a splash when he made a video about the battery life of Apple and the iPods. So let me go ahead and plug it in. Here I come back up, it's, hey, there we go, it booted up. So that's super cool. Now it is charging, which is kind of neat. I don't know if it'll hold that charge, I guess we're gonna find out. Um, might take it out for a little adventure. But if we look here, maybe I'll, like I said, I'll take it to the Apple store, look for a case. So you can see that the menu, I have music, I have extras, I have settings, I can shuffle the songs. The backlight just basically turns it on. There's no setting here in terms of working with the backlight, maybe it's underneath settings. Let's try that. So if we go, yeah, backlight timer. So if I wanna to go to the backlight timer, I'll go in there and just, we'll make it always on for the purpose of this video. Obviously that would eat up the battery. Although I don't even know if the battery will last two minutes or if it has to be plugged in here. You have equalizers there for different types of music that you might have. So it was a pretty advanced little device for its time. Remember this is 20 years ago. So let's go back to the main menu and let's have a look at music. So if I go back, oh, that's settings for menu. So go back all the way. The, the main menu there was if I wanna change the order of items. So if I go into music here, we can see what I was listening to. I used to listen to a lot of audiobooks on the iPod. There's none here. I have them on Audible now, and they are not sponsoring this video. But if I go up, let's have a look at, let's go to playlists. And yeah, sure enough, so you can see here that I've got just a few playlists on here. One of the features I used to use all the time in iTunes was the Genius feature. So I would say, okay, I like the song Batman. Go ahead and give me a whole bunch of songs that are similar to it. Now this particular Batman is probably, it is. So this is John Zorn. So it's a jazz musician, uh, it's an album called Naked City. Absolutely fantastic album if you're into jazz. and. Uh, that's a great album, that's a great song. So a lot of these songs would be uh, sort of put in here. It's kind of weird that My Name Is Mud is, I guess people who like John Zorn also like uh, other songs as well. <laughs> and so I can go in there. Um, I can see the different songs. 
California Stars by Billy Bragg, and then yeah, so a whole bunch of stuff, some Nick uh, Nick Drake in there. So we have that. So that's kind of cool. And if I go into Dial S for Sony, is some jazz. Sunny is some jazz, not Sony. This is this is Apple, not Sony. So learning to fly, little Pink Floyd in there, My Generation, The Who, and then it would also again select songs that people that listen to My Generation by The Who might also like. This kind of makes sense. So if I go in there, Genius was hit and miss, but it did allow you to discover songs in your library that you may maybe haven't heard for a while. I used to have like thousand CDs and I put them all into iTunes so that I could access my whole library. If you go down there, you can see artists by albums, by genres, by composers. So that's kind of neat. Now if I go in here, let's have a look. There's some extras in here. So we can go into extras and oh, there's the game. So let's see what, first of all, let's see what the clock is. So right now it's set to January 1st, 2002. Um, that's wild. So if we go in here, we go into contacts. I'm sure I don't have any contacts in here. If not, sorry, I haven't kept in touch for the past 20 years. Yeah, there's just a sample contact in there. So it gives me a little sample and it gives me instructions of how to put contacts in there. So I'm not gonna use this as a contact device, so I won't bother with that. Let's have a calendar. Probably, again, it would be back to 2002. You have multiple calendars in there. Scroll through, check out what appointments I have for that day. I have nothing. Um, if we go in here and take a look at my favorite thing, there it is, I remember this very well. It's a game. You even got a game with the old iPod. And this is super deluxe. Oh, that worked. This is gonna be hard to do. It's been a while since I've played the old, uh, oh, come on, since I played the old, oh, oh now can it break out? I was gonna call it Super Breakout, but this is far from super. So you know, I'll have to play a lot of games to get back in this stream. Uh, uh, kick, have to play a lot of games before I get back into the swing of things. I'm not going to be doing any type of iPod Super Breakout Twitch stream anytime soon. Although, you know, I'm not that bad at it, maybe. Maybe that, if, so join me on Twitch on my new channel, Super Breakout on an iPod with Frank. So pretty happy about that. Okay, let's get out of there. So we have a whole bunch of uh, little things in there. So there you go. There we have a 20 year old iPod. Now the only thing is as well, is it does have the, I'm gonna unplug it. I'm gonna see if it holds its charge. So we can go here. Yep, it's holding a charge. So um, I had it plugged in for a little bit before I started filming. So it actually fully charged. So I'm gonna see how long that takes. And if I look here, you can see I've got the audio jack. Well, fortunately for me, I also found my old headphones. So always keep your stuff in a big Tupperware container, kids. And then you too can boot up 20-year-old technology and post it on YouTube. So there you have it. I've got my cool iPod. I can now hit the streets with this. Well, I may, I'm not going to do that. I've got my phone. But maybe I'll go to the Apple store and see if I can find a case for it. That should be an interesting conversation. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll check out some of my other videos on the channel where I really focus on how we can use technology to learn and teach. But I also hope that you enjoyed this little trip down memory lane and that you have uh, some similar musical tastes or maybe you just hated my selection of music. Uh, music's a pretty personal thing. But got a 20-year-old iPod that's now working.